Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do before we can get to the fun part is download and install Launchpad 95. If you navigate to the link in the description or somewhere below, just uh, click download. It shouldn't take too long. After that, you're going to want to unzip it. That too should not take very long. And then you're going to want to drag the Launchpad 95 folder into Ableton's MIDI remote scripts. To do that on a Mac, you just need to find Live in your applications, hold down Command, right click, Show Package Contents. From there, navigate your way into App Resources. And then simply drag Launchpad 95 over to MIDI remote scripts. Then you'll need to set up the ins and outs inside of Ableton. So go into your MIDI ins and outs and set your control surface as Launchpad 95 and set your input and output to Launchpad. So Launchpad 95 is going to give you three new modes with your Launchpad on top of the older existing modes. You get a step sequencer, a device controller, and an instrument mode. To get an instrument mode, you need to be in user mode 1 and make sure the user 1 button is yellow or amber, whatever you want to call it. And now your grid has turned into uh, basically a MIDI keyboard as opposed to the usual drum rack layout. I'll try to demonstrate that. Well, okay. This is Launchpad 95, user mode 1. This is regular Launchpad, user mode 1. So as you can see, it reacts a little differently. I've got push, and I love this in a different way. You can get into uh, different scale modes by hitting this, and now you're in scale edition. And this represents your root note. These red things are your root note. Uh, just hit something. This row of red right here represents your octave. This is uh, just in the middle. This moves up one. Going to the left moves down one. And all these green buttons down here are your musical modes. Right now it's in major. This is minor. And these are everything else you can imagine from Spanish to whole tones, minor blues, mixolydian, tons of stuff, and uh, it inspires a lot of creativity. Up here, you have your uh, user mode one instrument mode modes. Right now, we're in diatonic. This puts it into chromatic. And this turns it into a drum rack again. So it's essentially hitting hitting the third button there is pretty much the same thing that going into the red user one would do. Oops. So I'll try to demonstrate what the different things do as best as I can with the stock piano stand I've got loaded up. Either way, it's a lot of fun. And your scene buttons, they also take on some new functions. Um, this stops your selected clip. This starts your selected clip. This is a solo button. I'm not even sure if this will solo my voice if I press it. Okay, no, it did not solo my voice. It soloed this piano I've got loaded up. And then you have a overdub or session record button there.
Okay, now I'm going to try to explain the step sequencer, or at least how I use the step sequencer. To get into that, what I'm going to do is create an empty MIDI clip. As you can see, I've just done within a drum rack. Select that MIDI clip and hit user 2 twice. Now the grid is turned into a step sequencer. Horizontally, it represents where you're at within your clip. I have set my live sets time signature down from the default 4-4 four four to 1-4. I've been doing that forever anyway, but it's particularly useful with Launchpad 95 because on the step sequencer then, four buttons represent one bar. If I move it up to, let's move it up to four bars, bar one, bar two, bar three, and bar four. Now, the cells on the drum rack are represented in uh, groups of eight vertically. If you look on the screen, you should see a screen cap of my current drum rack. This is Kick Autopsy 3. If you move to the right of Kick Autopsy 3, you have Snare Dragon. And then up here is a shaker. So that's the final in that row of eight. When you move up, you, you bank up a cell at a time. So now instead of shaker all over two, this is Digi Monolith. And that's how that goes. So to create beats, all you need to do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this loop length up a little bit to four. And I'm just going to, I don't know. We'll there we go. We have a dead mouse track. Or the, the beginning of one. Now I should explain that, as you can see here, you only have um, if you if you got it set up in one four like I do, or actually if you have it set up anyway, this is going to be two bars. So to get to your third and fourth bar, you bank over and you saw that light up. Bar three, bar four. I'm going to set this to six bars now. Bar five. Six. Oops. Anyway, as you can see, it's a lot of fun and it's very easy to get lost in when you're just punching in random stuff like that. Okay, we'll stop with that and we'll move on to the next mode. Actually, no, I should point out that we have a, there's a second part of the step sequencer that's mute mode. So let's go back and we're going to select that clip again. We're at one bar. If you hit this again, it's going to turn red. That activates mute mode. You can either mute individual things or uh, mute a scene at a time. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next mode. The next mode is device controller mode. And to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is get into device controller mode by hitting user 1 twice. The button should be green. And currently on the, uh, the mic that I'm speaking into, I've got a chromatic vocoder set up. And let me see if I can get to the devices. There we go. These buttons up here represent which device you're on. When you hit this, it's the first device in the chain, or previous, or whatever. And this will move to the next device. Right now, this is uh, the VST Dynamics thing that I'm running through, so I'm not going to mess with that. The first device is a chromatic vocoder. This is the on-off button for the device. So I'm going to turn on this vocoder, and you can kind of hear that. This is the dry-wet parameter. Oh, 
really sure if you can make that out, can you? So we'll turn that off in eight parameters at a time. Um, one parameter per column. This moves through your devices and this moves through your tracks. This is a lock button and uh, this banks between uh, a next group of eight parameters. So I'm going to go turn that vocoder back on. I'll turn down the dry wet so you can hopefully hear me a little bit. And I'm not even sure what the next bank of eight parameters are, but I'm going to move over to them and just start punching stuff in.